Okay guys, we have an exciting video for you today. Uh, this is going to be the Rebel Trooper, as you see in front of you with the canvas. So have a good look, and uh, we'll be right with you. Okay, so our first step here is going to be base coating. I've actually already primed it in black. Um, so now I'm going to actually start with the shirt here and we'll go ahead and base coat it. Uh, I'm not going to go through all these processes because it's pretty simple. But I wanted to show you uh, where, I, where I base coat here and then also uh, what color I use. So I'm going to base coat the shirt with this same color. I'm going to do the boots. I'm going to do uh, the strap and the goggles with this color and then the gloves. Pretty easy step here. Just make sure you're thin. You have thin paints. As you can tell, I'm going to have to go over this more than once. So it's just take your time. Okay, so now that the gloves and the hat or the uh, gloves, the shirt, and the boots are painted, we're going to do the pants here. Again, this can be pretty thin, so make sure you do more than one, one layer here. So actually, I think this one took me, I think it's going to take me about three layers. So just be, just be very, pretty, uh, consistent and don't worry about it the first go around uh, and what's important about layering is that when you layer uh, you want to let the the first layer dry before you go on to the next one especially in like when you prime in black I think priming in black is a really good way of doing things especially with something with a lot of color uh, or, or difference of color uh, because it actually is it kind of brightens up the model a little bit uh, and kind of gives a nice really good you know undertone to the, the colors you're doing um, but you want to make sure when you do your first layer here, uh, go ahead and wait a little bit and then go back to the first layer. So what I do is I usually do part of the leg and then come part to this other part of the leg. And then I'll go back to the other part of the leg and go back and forth until I achieve the color I'm looking for. Now that the pants are done, we're going to go ahead and move on to the, the coat or the outer jacket or whatever you want to call it. Uh, with the unit leader here, he's going to have more of an outer jacket, obviously, because he's got the full coat uh, than the rest of the unit. So uh, this is going to take a little bit longer. But the reason why I chose this miniature, because when we go into blending, uh, this is going to be a good way of doing, you know, showing a little bit of blending. Now the blending is going to be, uh, I'm not going to do going to heavy blending here with this just because it will take too long. Uh, we'll get another video for just, just wet blending or just blending in general. Uh, but I wanted to do this miniature for that reason, though. So I'm, I'm pretty much just doing the jacket here, and then the hat. Actually, I call it. I have like a three pieces to the hat. It's gonna be the top part, the under rim, and then the actual goggles themselves. So the actual the rim of the hat is gonna be in this color. Finish her up. So I'm not going to paint the whole thing for you. I'm just going to show you a little bit. But here's the rim, rim of the hat here. Okay. I've, I've showed you pretty much everything here, so I'm kind of going to move on and uh, go to the next base coating. Okay. So now that the coating's done, the coat's done, I'm going to go ahead and go to the backpack. Uh, I wanted to come back, kind of make a leather backpack, so um, I started with the Rhinox hide. Uh, I'm just going to go to the backpack straps, the uh, uh, Bandalore across his chest, and then his belt. That's all that's going to be in this color here. Okay, again, I'm not going to do the whole thing for you. I'm just going to show you a little bit, uh, and then we'll move on. 
sorry it's a little bit out of camera i'm trying to keep it in there right, here's the belt like i said i'm gonna have to do multiple layers but i just want to show you where i i do it and then i'll finish this off camera and then uh i'll come back once it's fully face coat Okay, so the last base coating step here is actually going to be the face. Uh, I don't worry about the eyes and I don't worry about the, the hair yet. I go ahead and just fully base coat it. This color too is, is definitely going to take some layers. But what's really important about the face is to make sure your, your, your paint is very thin. Uh, there's very a lot of details on the faces. And to get these right, you have to make sure you're doing layers and layers and layers of Bugman's Glow. Um, or any any of your whatever your base color is but make sure you're doing layers and don't cover up any of the details with heavy paints all right we'll come back with the washing all right this is gonna be another quick little setup here i'm not gonna go too far into this um because this is another step that everybody knows um so I chose this color for the pants to kind of give it some distinguishing brown look uh, compared to the boots and then the, the jacket. Uh, this is also going to be the same shade I'm going to use on the face. So make sure I go all the way around here. I like to go thick and then kind of pull things off when necessary. everything's hit with a really distinct shade like this it, it, even if you don't think it's going to uh, make a huge difference make sure you cover every area because it's it's going to change the complete color of your face color. okay so I'm just wash off a brush here All right, now we're going to the face again when we're talking about base coating and washing we want to make sure that it's just you're going light you want it to pull up right, but you don't want large pools and covering up details. Alright, so we're moving on now. This is going to move on to uh, an Argrog shade here. I'm only putting this shade on the, uh, the areas where I did the I think it's rack art flesh. The shirt's important to do. Very important. You want to make sure it doesn't pull up too much, kind of like it just did. Uh, so I'm going to have to soak some of that up a little bit. Yeah, I try to soak that up. So this is non oil. This is actually going on the rest of it. So anything that's not going to be uh, your pants, your shirts, gloves, boots, the rest of it's all going to be on non oil. So your backpack color, your uh, gun, and then your uh, outer jacket are all going to be non oil. Makes that jacket look nice and rich and dark. I like it.
this point, a lot of people stop here, other than maybe doing the eyes and the, the you know, the chin area with his hair. But a lot of people could stop here. This is technically tabletop at this moment. But we're going to move on to the highlighting. All right, we're first going to do the pants here. And if you look, we're kind of a top-down view right now. Uh, those are kind of what I'm going to be looking for to kind of pick out in the pants. Now the mid level is always going to be a little bit uh, more than the top level, obviously. So I'll probably go ab above and beyond a little bit of what I can just see, just to kind of make it pop a little bit more. But this, these videos are not there to show how quick something can be painted. This is going to take some time. So everything should be watered down or used with medium and you should be doing layers and again go over it one or two times or maybe three or four you can do I mean basically you want to stop going in on the area and let it dry so if you haven't let it dry fully and you keep moving it around you're actually going to peel off your paint and kind of make it make it look kind of uh, I don't know how to describe it, but uh, looks like kind of you're almost already halfway peeling up paint, and so it's kind of ridged up and it has a lot of texture. A couple good things about about making everything light and thin is that one, it dries faster. Uh, two, if you mess up, it is a lot easier to fix because it's not it's not very uh, apparent. It can you can get better in straighter lines. Like there you go, I just messed up. And I, it was because it was still wet, I took a dry brush and just wiped it right out of the creases. Yeah, I, I preach thin paints for sure. I'm getting these knee areas. This left leg obviously is a little bit further out than the right one. So I want to hit this leg more so than I would the right leg. And in fact, there's probably gonna be very few areas in the right leg I'm actually gonna to touch. Uh, due to the cape uh, and everything in his back, it kind of covers up that right leg. Yeah, out of the FFG core box, these these rebels are, I think, a lot better sculpts than the stormtroopers. They have a lot of a lot of detail, a lot of creases in the legs and the arms and stuff. Uh, anytime you do too thick of primer too thick of uh, painting you're going to cover up every one of those creases or, or if not every one a lot of them and so your detail will go further and further away um, ffg isn't hasn't been in the miniature game that long and so because of that their their miniatures aren't the same kind of quality that you see in other companies there's not there's not near as much detail in something like this than there is in you know gw miniatures or you know malifaux or whatever game you play that's been around for a while the only reason why I say that uh, is because again we go back to some of my other videos that I've done um, I always preach on no matter if you're doing a really high detailed miniature or you're not you want to make sure you're practicing your techniques and your styles that way when you get to a very detailed miniature it's that much easier you can do some contrast paints on this and make it, you know, look really well and look really good. And there's a lot of videos out there for that. Uh, but you want to really practice these techniques. Okay, we're going to go ahead and move on into, uh, I kind of showed you exactly what I want for the pants. We're going to go ahead and move on to the next piece of clothing. This is the strap across his chest. We're going to do his belt. And we're also going to do his backpack and straps. Um, again, I, I, I have a top down view here. Uh, we're trying to get the areas that we caught by the light. So the top of each one of these uh, ammo pouches or whatever we want to call these is where I'm going to be hitting this mid level highlight.
this color reaction probably needs not that many layers because it uh, seems to be picking up pretty well. At this point, you might think that's a little too too thick and kind of weird looking, but I can view. Okay, there you go. I didn't mean too thick, too bright, but it actually, it's kind of a leather, so, um, you know, that pinkishness to uh, an animal skin, that's kind of what the the point of this color is supposed to show, where it kind of gets worn out. We're going to do it on the left side and right side of this buckle, and then we'll go ahead and move on to the straps. straps are interesting because you don't want to go all the way down right because you don't see right now the bottom of the strap you just see kind of from his his pec up to his shoulders and then across his back and let's get it back in view here okay so what i do here is actually more of a layering technique um i'll go really thin pretty much from his pec all the way up and then now you see i am near his shoulder and coming up from there so i didn't put the full length of color all the way down and I kind of moved up from there same thing with same thing I'm doing here in the backpack I'm going from midway um, on the top of his backpack up to the, the ridge and this this area of the backpack I pretty much just want to get if you kind of have that natural curve from where you can actually look down from the top like this and it's a little out of focus to do the camera it's I don't know why it's not it's grabbing its focus but um, that ridge where it kind of starts the curve that's where you actually want to stop and then come up towards the top of the backpack I'm going to do it on each pouch here and on the left and right side of this pack here's the pouch Sometimes this, this camera wants to focus, sometimes it doesn't. It's focusing on underneath the pack, but it's not focusing on the pack itself. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the, uh, the next part of the miniature. Okay, so this is probably gonna be your main focus is, is for highlights. Uh, this is gonna be the jacket. Uh, because the unit leader is such a long jacket, it's going to be very extensive, uh, I'm going to break it up into sections. So the collar area for what I'm doing now and up the back and his arms, I'm going to do almost like a uh, like a standard highlight for me. I'm going to go on the top of the creases, kind of like I've been doing with the pants and so on and so forth. This section of your highlights, are, you're going to have to take some time off. And really kind of plan out where you want these highlights. And if you've if you've if you've been doing thin paints and everything so far, you should see those raised up areas a lot easier uh, to actually kind of guide you into your your highlights. Your, everything's not going to look good until you start blending. So just know that. Like right now, it looks kind of edgy and and off, right? Um, just just stick with it and trust yourself and you can all like I said if you're staying thin and everything you're not going too too much you're not doing too much and you're staying thin um, it's always easier to just go back and kind of touch things up a little bit and change some colors around and change some stuff like that but you should you should know that it's not gonna look the best until you start blending and finishing everything out with the top highlight top of the strap this this is the area we're going to touch up the most um, other than the the back part of this but 
obviously this is going to be where the sun hits so you're going to want to do this area you have a lot of the mid-level color pretty straightforward uh, i'm going to go over the arm real quickly over here on the, the left uh, you kind of do it the same way the pants you look down on the miniature you plan out where you want your highlights and just start going obviously the shoulder area is going to see the most highlight uh, and you kind of just go, go down the arm and fill out those ridges. You're going to get bored and you're going to get, um, I don't know, unfocused. Just make sure you just take a break if you need to. Uh, but don't skip on some of the stuff. Because if you just decide to paint the whole left arm, you know, the mid-level color, it's going to go off. So, All right, let's move over here to the back end. This is where it's going to be really kind of funny. Uh, what I'm doing here is actually taking the top level color here and putting it down where I want to. Uh, I'm going to make this really harsh. I like to, to put all my colors down and then blend them. Um, I just like that's how I visualize it better. So obviously it's very thin. You can see the base coating through the paint. So I'm going to have to do multiple layers. Uh, but this is where I want the top level highlights. This is the areas I want top level, top level highlights. And I'm going to make it to where... It's very definitive and, and edgy, and then I'll blend it all together. And we won't go over much of the blending today, uh, but I'm just gonna show you how I set it up. Uh, basically, blending is just mixing of colors and cutting the lines to make sure things flow evenly. Because as of, as of right now, you can see where the color changes very distinctly. Uh, and then when I put on the mid-level color, you'll also see that, that difference between the colors are gonna be very drastic, drastic. This is where people's minds usually go, this looks terrible, I messed up. Just keep doing it. Keep putting those layers on, make sure everything dries first, and then move on. This is where I, I planned out my highlight, that top level, because this is where I felt like the sun, or whatever light source is going to be on this miniature, will be hidden directly. All right, I'm moving on to my mid-level color now. And if you notice, I'm actually going into my my um, top of a color as well. That, that's okay. It really isn't a problem. Now, a style you could be doing right now is wet blending. So putting your, you know, using one section at a time, like one section at a time of this this cape, and putting your mid-level high, uh, highlight down. Then you, while it's still wet, applying your top-level highlight and just mixing it together that way. It's a very easily way, way, easy way of doing things. And I, t I technically do do that when I blend it. Um, but I like to still have all my colors down to see exactly where they're going to be at. And then blend it. If I still, I can still use the wet blending technique there. Um, and it's all kind of, I, 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 I kind of actually use a mix of every, you know, a bunch of different types of, of blending when I actually blend something this large. Uh, but... You know, whatever technique you like the best, you can always use here. So. Again, this is going to be multiple layers, and it looks awful right now, right? I even thought after I painted, you know, hundreds of miniatures like this, uh, I even thought, like, this is, this is not turning out the way I want it to. So this, this part actually here actually curved down a little bit. So I, I actually wanted to put a mid-level highlight here instead of a top level to kind of give it that distinguishing look of, of it actually curving down just a hair. If you notice right there, I actually, I actually try to stay away from the edges. So when I have a shade like that, when I, when I pop in a shade, um, I'm about, I, I can't even measure that. It's a very, very small distance, but I actually want to pull away from that edge a little bit to give it that distinguish because if you think about it the sun will actually give us a tiny bit of a shadow right there so so I'm just continue working through this and I'm not going to show you the entire step because this step does take a long time this is probably your most lengthy step 
because as you can tell, you pretty much can see right through all that paint still. Uh, and then after I get every all the paint down, I'm still gonna have to blend it. You actually don't even have to put a base coat. Technically, if you knew you're gonna blend this, you could actually blend all three colors at once. So you could have been doing this from the beginning. Uh, but again, I like to have all the colors down before I start blending. Just, I'm, I'm weird like that. It does take a little bit more time. Well, actually, I think it doesn't take as much time, but that's just my style because it is my style. Uh, but some people would argue, why would you put a base coat down? Why don't you just blend the entire miniature? Um, I don't know. That's just how I do it. I also think when you shade, it's, it's also easier. You, you can have that shade like in between those creases, like that dark area. It's only possible to do when you have that base coat down. But you could, you know, technically just shade those areas themselves. So, yeah, these videos are just showing how I do it. And if you haven't done stuff like this before, it's a good technique to use. Um, but if you have a different technique and you like to use it, by all means, do it. You know, this is not not a, a video forcing you to do it a certain way. This is kind of getting redundant, so we're gonna, um, I'm gonna go ahead and probably push on. Basically, as you, I, I showed you what I wanted to here. Um, as you can tell, the, the colors are coming in, and the lines are very, very sharp, and uh, you can easily tell where the line started, or color started and ended. Uh, so what I'm gonna do after this is just blend it, and it will look really good. So I'm going to show you real quickly on the shade. As you can tell right here, I'm already uh, already blending a little bit. You can actually tell it's already blending. But as you can tell by my wet palette, what I'm doing is actually I'm, I'm sort of doing a, uh, a loading the brush style. Um, again, through this process, and I'm not going to show you it all, uh, I actually did do a little bit of wet blending, a lot of the brush a little bit, a little bit of layering all those different kind of techniques that uh, I can teach you in different stuff.
All right, so this next area is actually the, the metal areas, quote unquote, because I'm actually not painting metallic colors. Uh, I'm using more of a gray, gray to white scale, but or actually it's a black, black to white scale, but using gray in between here um, to kind of give it a met metallic look without having to actually use metallics. It's a it's a technique actually. N and M is the technique. Um, I do it more of a subtle M M N N M M technique. Um, but it, it works really well. So it's actually up by the ears, the binoculars, the gun, uh, a lot of things here. I'm gonna actually, oh, I'm out of camera here. I'll pull it back in, there we go. But yeah, I'm gonna actually, everything that's gonna be, like the buckles on his pants, uh, the buckles on his backpack, the buckles on his mask, his, uh, like I said, his gun and his binoculars as well, are all gonna be layered up in a non-metallic material fashion. Okay, so I'm going to show you the gun a little bit more. Uh, it's going to be actually a little bit more of an edge highlight. Uh, but the, since the gun's facing towards the ground, I want these areas touched up here. These are the areas, you know, obviously going to be reflected by the light. And that's kind of what we want to touch here. Um, but we actually look at the side of the gun too. We want to do those raised up areas and different lines and, um, you know, things where bolts would be and stuff like that as well. So... Yeah, like right here, right there, right there. Anything that kind of sets it apart is a really nice, nice way to put a middle of a highlight here. Move on to the face here. This is this is tough. Again, go thin with this. But we really want to work on these cheek areas. I'm actually pushing the brush down a little bit, but I actually want to when you when you do this by yourself, uh, make sure you're you're pushing the brush up towards the eyeball, to, because the cheek's going to have the the brightest areas. So, and then when you're doing the nose, push down to the tip of the nose. When you do that with a thin paint, it's actually giving yourself a natural highlight um, without actually, you know, changing color. Because you're pushing the, the most of the paint up towards the area where it's going to be the brightest. If that makes sense. We get the mouth. I'm going to get the side of the cheeks here in just a second. Normally, I'll get on top of the eye, but because it's under the hat, um, it's going to be shaded. So I won't touch on that. This is the area that most people are afraid of, the face. Um, just go slow, go with thin paint, um, and just be careful and you'll have a lot of fun with it. This is also the area if you do really well, uh, you'll get praise on because most people can't. And a lot of people look at the face. So if you can really, really you know, dial in faces, you'll be really happy with the result. here if you're worried about kind of straight lines and stuff like that one of the tricks that I do now it's hard to do with a camera here uh, and that's why you sometimes see me pull out a little out of view a little bit uh, is because I'm trying to get closer to my body the closer you get to your body uh, you keep the center you know center gravity right there right in front of your chest um, and you go really really small strokes it may look like I'm doing big strokes but it's actually very small the camera's kind of blown up and really close but very very small strokes and that's how you get straight lines and that's how you do these very small areas as well again these are just techniques that we're building to when we start doing really really small areas and really small spaces that it just helps out for a beginner this face would be really difficult uh, for more of an experienced painter uh, this face is is mediocre um, because it is actually kind of a large face from what I've painted in other uh, other games and other companies. Legion scale is actually it's not it's not a really big scale, um, but it's it's a good size. 
here i think i think this is a very important section of the the body and it's it's probably one of the more difficult for sure on this miniature so if this is a little longer than you want you kind of skip get ahead a couple seconds and we'll we'll move on okay so this is actually a gray we're going to put on we're going to start doing his hair so this guy has uh facial hair um almost like a uh, a goatee, I think it's what they're called. I don't know what they're called, but it goes around his 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 mouth, so a mustache, then comes around his chin. So it's I think it's modeled off the old Rex. It's kind of the the model here. I know I keep saying this, but just go thin, go slow, and this won't be a problem at all. This is an easy section. The man doesn't look good when you finish it. Because it's actually a gray here too, I actually don't highlight this either. So if it was a brown, I would highlight it. But gray, I don't. We'll spend a little bit more time here and then we'll move on. Okay, so again, I apologize. My camera doesn't want to stay in focus. It's focusing on the boots right now. Uh, but what I'm doing is I'm actually edge highlighting uh, my leather. So just take it on the edges. The most raise up edge, edges for any leather part. So the strap across his chest, his belt, and his backpack. I'm going to go around his backpack. So every edge on his backpack I'm going to hit with this. what I'm doing it's clear enough I think but just just the edges I don't want a very deep line I just want the edge of the, the backpack itself so okay now it's in focus a little bit more so here I can show you a little bit easier now all right yeah so just this edge here I want I want it uh, I want to highlight it I don't have to go in I can just kind of go down because that that bottom part of that strap or that, that latch wouldn't be shown uh, as bright in the sun. So this is still a top level highlight even though I'm edge highlighting. the pants here this is an edge highlight so this is going to be very few of these ridges i'm going to actually do uh, just the ones that raise up the most this knee area i'm going to do a little bit on the side and then his right leg uh, as you can tell actually right now see that one area on his right leg that kind of is a little brighter than the others i'm going to hit that a little bit as well so but you shouldn't have that many highlights on a top level highlights on your your legs here but obviously you still want to stick to his left leg Due to the fact that it's it's facing out a little bit more, I'm gonna edge highlight these pockets.
back to the NMM sections. This is going to be my top level highlight. This is going to be the areas where the sun is by far directly hitting the, the gun or the binoculars or belt buckles and all that kind of stuff. So you don't, you don't want to go near as deep as you would with the mid-level highlights here. It's going to be a little bit more subtle. Apologize about the focus, the autofocus is a little off. But these basically it's the same areas where you mid-level highlight, you just want to do less of it. So kind of almost edge highlight the areas where you mid-level highlight it. Okay, these are your eyes, obviously. Okay, so this is the white. Obviously, you, you do your white eyes here. You're gonna do all the N and M technique. We're gonna put the on the very tip, you're gonna put a white there as well. So wherever you did your top level highlight, you're gonna kind of dot it with white. Move on to the gun and this is a little bit more clear so you can actually see where I put that top of a highlight a little bit easier the camera's actually working with me this time yeah so you just just put a little bit of line white you just don't want to put a whole lot because the gun's not supposed to be white this is where it's reflecting the most and metallic obviously reflects heavily um, and that's why you're putting a white line here You do this with your buckles too so everything everything that you've done that is going to be your metallic materials you're going to do this this white outline as well now you can do different techniques with there's a lot of techniques So this is the face again. This is the brightest part of the face. So this top of the color, you're just going to hit the cheeks. And then you want to hit the tip of the nose. If you felt like you wanted other areas too, by all means do it. But this is just how I do it. You could blend this, but I, I tend, to, tend to not have to do that. All right, so... This is the goggles. I, I like to do some special goggles. I wanted to try something new actually this time. Uh, it's actually not new. The, the style is the same, but the, a new direction of where the light's hitting. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to actually paint the entire area of goggles with the, the base color. And then I'm going to move on to the mid-level color and then about go halfway up in the goggles. I'm going to paint towards the top of the ridge of the hat. So halfway here, and I'm going to paint upwards towards the top of the goggles with my mid-level color. I'm going to take my top level color and go half of my mid-level color, so one-fourth of the goggles basically, and go up towards the top of the goggles as well. And you may kind of have to go back and forth with your top of your different colors here and make the make the look that you want. That's totally okay. It takes practice. And then I take the white. And with this style, the way, the way I'm doing it this time, I'm just going to do the edge. Very top edge. So almost like it's not even there, to be honest with you. But I wanted it there. Just to give a little bit of distinguishing the color here. 